In these problems, we're being asked to verify a trigonometric identity. So we have this statement here where the secant squared of x minus 1 times the cosine of x equals tangent of x times the sine of x. And this is true. This is a real true statement. And we're supposed to show that it's true by step by step converting one side until it looks like the other. Okay, so uh, we're going to take the left side here. We could take the right and try to make it look like the left. I think we're going to take the left and try to make it look like the right and uh, use trigonometric identities or algebra or some combination to turn it into the right side. And step by step, they want us to write down which identities we used or when we used algebra. So we'll keep notes on that as well. The first thing that jumps out at me on this side is that we have the secant squared x minus 1. And it looks suspiciously similar to some of these Pythagorean identities. In fact, here's a Pythagorean identity that has secant squared in it. But it's not secant squared minus 1. We've got tangent squared plus 1 equals the sequent, secant squared. So at first, it might not look like this actually applies. But we're allowed to manipulate these algebraically. So I can just say I'll subtract 1 from each side. If I do that, I get this new identity. Well, it's really not new. It's the same thing. The tangent squared equals 1, or sorry, the secant squared minus 1. And that is exactly what we have here. So I can replace what's in the parentheses just with tangent squared of x. I won't even bother writing the right side every time. We'll just keep working on the left side until it looks identical to the right side. But let's note what we did here. We used a Pythagorean identity. Okay. So what can we do next? Well, when I have um, a tangent uh, squared, I usually like to bust it out into the sine and cosine parts, especially since we've got a cosine here. We might be able to do some algebra with it afterwards. So we're going to use this identity here, the quotient identity, and rewrite tangent squared of x as sine squared of x over cosine squared x. And then we still have our multiply by cosine x. Oh, I forgot my x here. So that was just the quotient identity for the tangent. Okay. Now I think we can do some algebra. We've got two cosines down here, one cosine here. This is going to cancel with one of these. So that gives us sine squared x over cosine x. And I think I want to do a little bit more algebra. You know, this sine squared x is sine x times sine x. So I'm actually going to rewrite this as, oops, as sine x over cosine x times sine x. It's the same thing. I'm just breaking this sine squared x apart. The reason I'm doing that is we have this sine squared x here, and then we have a tangent, and I think we're pretty much there. But we should note what we did in that step. We did algebra. And then the last thing, this sine x over cosine x, you've probably already recognized that as the tangent. So we can just turn that back into the tangent. So this is the tangent x times sine x. And that's exactly what was on the right side. So we've, we've verified the identity. This last step was just using that quotient identity again. And there we go. These, these problems are not easy. And they can be a little bit daunting at first. So I think we should try one more. This one looks like a real beast. Cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So how do we handle this? Again, we're going to take this left side and try to make it look like the right side. And first of all, we've got a cosine squared and a sine squared. That looks like it could be one of these identities here. Um, and hmm, let's see, what if we solved this one for cosine by subtracting sine from both sine squared from both sides? I would get cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared x. So we could just pop that in for the cosine right here. Let's do that. 1 minus sine squared x, and then we have our minus sine squared x. Okay, 
And what did we do there? Well, we used a Pythagorean identity. Now, I think we're pretty much there. You'll notice on this side we have, on the right side, we have 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Well, we have a negative sine squared x, a negative sine squared x. All we have to do is group those together. Um, that is 1, and then minus 2. We have 2 sine squared x, so minus 2 sine squared x. That was just a little bit of algebra, and we're already there. So only two steps required on that one. So. Play around with these Pythagorean identities. Know that you can manipulate them algebraically. And uh, these, after you do a few, they shouldn't be that hard.